I'd like to talk about block planes today. I covered uh, my bench planes and my specialty planes in earlier videos. So I'll talk about the, uh, the block planes I use in my furniture making. And this is a good assortment here. And I happen to have one of almost all the, uh, the different variations of block plane. So i uh, fortunate that way. So I can then show you the, uh, my most often used ones. So I'll start with the, uh, on this side. This is a uh, 102, it's a small, I call it a, an apron plane. And it's uh, called an apron plane for good reason. It's portable and you can have, slip it in your apron pocket. And uh, it doesn't have an adjustable mouth. And it's a low angle plane, just the same. And the difference between the, the block planes is uh, they're either low angle this is a good example here of a low angle plane, just bedded at 37 and a half degrees, or 12 degree bed, sorry, and a 25 degree bevel up iron, develops a 37 degree uh, angle of attack. It's low angle, and it's great for, uh, for shearing uh, end grain fibers. Now we have a, uh, a standard angle, so that would be, uh, low angle is a 16 and a half, it's a Stanley, uh, numbering system for, for hand planes. I think we're all familiar with that. This is a 60 and a half, and this is a nine and a half. This is an earlier version. This is a uh, embedded at 20 degrees and with a 25 degree bevel up iron, and that will bring it to 45 degrees. So it's similar to a uh, conventional uh, bench plane. And I use this, uh, I use it extensively as a small smoother so it's a one-handed, uh, they're all one-handed planes by the way, so, but this is a uh, one-handed uh, small smoother and I use it extensively. I'm not sure if it's still available through, uh, these are all, most for the most part they're uh, Lee Nielsen planes. This is a Veritas plane and this is an original Stanley low angle block plane. I wanted to show that too, it's a more inexpensive version, but it has its limitations and it's, uh, of course the, uh, it does, it does perform similarly to the other block planes, but the, um, the finishing isn't quite there compared to uh, something like Lee Nielsen or Vertes. So this is a uh, standard angle and uh, for most most woodworkers or furniture makers that I know uh, have uh, seem to all have the low angle version and not familiar that there is a standard angle low ang uh, block plane available. So this would be the nine and a half, this is a 60 and a half low angle. And this is the apron plane, a 102, and this is, uh, again, it's the, uh, the original Stanley version of the, uh, of the block plane. It's, uh, it's a low angle, just the same, but very, very thin, a much thinner iron. You can see the, the difference in the iron is much thinner. And this is, uh, that's an eighth of an inch. This is probably three, well, sixteenth or so, just a little over sixteen. And this is, uh, this is the next one up. It's not a, uh, it's, not a, it's, a it's a block plane, but it's a rabbiting block plane. You now, with the, diff the differentiation between this and the, uh, <clears throat> and the standard block plane is that this one, the blade goes right across. You can use it for rabbiting. If those familiar with rabbiting, you would need that at a right angle so you can rabbit the, uh, with uh, clean up a rabbit or create a rabbit on the uh, on the long edge of a uh, of a board. So this is, uh, it's, a, it's probably considered a specialty plane. Not necessary to have one, to own one. I just happened to own one. I bought them several years ago, actually. They've gone up considerably in price, I might add. And this is, uh, so that's a, it's a single purpose uh, function plane, block plane. Probably very similar in length to, now we'll get into a more specialty. Uh, I just wanted to show you one extreme is the uh, is a smaller apron plane. At the other extreme, I have a iron miter plane from Veritas. I don't think it's still available. There was limited, uh, it was only available for a year or two. So I purchased it uh, just the same. It does have an adjustable mouth. It's, a, it's just a large version of a low angle block plane and it's ideal for, uh, for trimming the end grain off blocks and larger uh, larger pieces of wood and not the uh, not just the edge or the end of a, of a board so this would be ideal for for blocks and it's called an iron miter it's a throwback to uh, to uh, original iron miters from 100 years ago and there's a series of them and this is Veritas's uh, version now it does have a horn that allows it because it's been developed also as a shooting 
board plane. I can use it as a shooting board plane. So I've left the horn on, but I no longer use that. I use a dedicated shooting plane now, but it's ideal for as a shooting plane also. It's quite the uh, interesting plane. It's very hefty at, I think, five, a little over five pounds. So it's just a giant low angle block plane. Now this is another specialty plane. It's a skew number 140 uh, rabbit plane. And I don't have my little screwdriver here, but this plate comes off and I'll just get the screwdriver. So this, uh, this uh, works, works similarly to the other block planes. Now this fence component comes off. I can remove that. Should come off. So it comes off. And then uh, you can remove the bar and use it as a skew block plane or a skew uh, rabbit plane. Now the, the rabbiting function is enabled by removing this right hand plate. It's an interesting plane. It's actually a remake of a Stanley version of the same plane. So this plate comes off and once you remove the, uh, the plate, it's a right hand version by the way, once you remove the plate you have a, uh, a skew rabbit plane and that means that the blade goes right up to the edge and the edge is at 90 degrees so I can create rabbits horizontally or vertically using this on the right angle and the rest of it's similar to every other block plane aside from the fact that it doesn't have an adjustable mouth. It's a fixed mouth and that's for good reason if you look at the construction. So I normally uh, I use it for that reason or I just use it as a uh, skew uh, block plane. So put that plate back on. I'll put the fence on. I'll try not to drop it this time. And the fence when you purchase this type of plane, you don't get the auxiliary wood fence. That's something you need to create. It's just a piece of wood. A little tight in there. There we go. I think the, uh, the wood is expanded a little. I need to adjust that. So I'll, uh, I'll tighten that. And that, that fence, that fence is uh, what determines the size of the rabbit. So I'm moving it across. You can you can put any any piece of wood there. It's quite an interesting plane. It's a little like on the expensive side, to be honest. And it does come in a left hand and a right hand version. So well, these are the, the block planes I use extensively, and I actually have duplicates of one or two of these planes. And I'll show you the, uh, what what you can do with a block plane. So if you have a board on edge, and I use a uh, standard angle plane. Because I'm doing the long edge, I could create a, uh, a chamfer. Easily create a chamfer along one of the corners, a long corner. If the or you can dial in the mouth and reduce the size of the mouth. So I've got I have a fine, very finely set now. Just creating a small aris, a very small chamfer. Just to normally create a small chamfer like that on the, on the edges of my furniture components. So that's what that does. I can also use it for edge training. And it's ideal, it's a single hand operation, it's small enough to be able to work with smaller boards. And you could also use it for uh, for smoothing the face the face of a board. Now I have to admit this is uh, not the hardest wood, so but just for demonstration purposes. So you would ideally use these planes on smaller components, and not so much on a large. That's that, and I'll show you how to use a. Uh, I'll just get a bench hook here. What you can do with the. Uh, uh, one of my. Just a simple bench hook that I talk about in other, vid other of my videos. By the way, you can subscribe. I talk about hand tools extensively. I'm a huge advocate of hand tools, so what I do is uh, because it's sand grain, I tend to pick up the uh, low angle version. The 16 and a half, and this is the 9 and a half. 
and I'll just give an example. What you can do with a bench hook is use the bench hook as a, as a shooting board with a small plane like this. So I'll trim the uh, very finely, very fine trimming of the edge at 90 degrees on a small component using uh, using a 16 and a half Lee Nielsen. Uh, so that works. So you know, there's quite a bit of versatility with these with these small block planes and uh, smaller components. Now something else I'd like to show you is my thicknessing sled, and I use this to uh, the thickness uh, piece of wood down that I use in Tomiko and. Uh, other components of a furniture design. So I'll show that. Uh, make sure you get the orientation of the grain right so it's rising as you're planing forward. Uh, because I'm working on a face, I'm going to select the 9.5, the, the smoother version of the block plane, and it just glides in this track. Now the track has been set up for these, uh, for these, these block planes. So that's a kind of a thick shaving there, but that's you get the idea. So this I can trim it down to a uh, by using spacer blocks. And I'll show that. It's a little a bit of a tedious. So again, I uh, this is my uh, small thickness ink sled. It's ideal if you haven't got access to anything to be able to thickness any smaller components. Having said that, you can't really thickness anything really below this on a, on a thickness scene or a, a thickness planer unless you use a raised sled or something. It's, then again, it's not, not the safest operation, but if you're using uh, hand tools ex ex exclusively in your work and you want to uh, design or build one of these thicknessing sleds, uh, so it just dials in the right thickness. It's an example of that. This is the spacer, so I can dial in the uh, using spacers and uh, use some veneer strips for a, for a shim. I can I can dial this this in and you change this, replace it with something thinner or thicker, and then add small pieces of veneer or more pieces of veneer. To, and once I've done that, and I just set this up. There's a little stop at the end, and the tracks again. It's dialed in for these uh, specific. Now, one thing I should have done is wax these, uh, wax the soles of these. You know, I, I normally wax the soles using paraffin wax, and that, that really makes it a lot easier to glide across. <laughs> Huge difference. So I keep a bar of paraffin wax nearby on every uh, one of my three or four work benches here. And I've, uh, I've set this really thin now. And so what you're striving for is uh, the thickness, uh, the width of the, uh, the component you're, you're thicknessing. And ensure that everything's uh, parallel, uh, coplanar on both sides. And that's what this thicknessing sled does. It, gives, it provides you that the uniform, uniform uh, shaving at whatever thickness you desire. So that's that. A couple other things. Uh, back to the adjustable mouth. The ones with the adjustable mouths, everything except for the apron plane has an adjustable mouth, except for the uh, number 140 skew rabbit. This will allow you to dial in the the uh, mouth opening and so you can create really fine openings. Now you almost need that if you're doing end grade work and I've uh, shown that in, uh, using the uh, bench hook. If you're doing any end grade work you need uh, you need a very very tight mouth because you're actually slicing the fibers off the end off the end of the board and uh, here, slicing the fibers off the end of a board. I wonder if I can use this. This one's yeah, it's gonna what I could do is use my. This is the iron miter. This is not the way I normally shoot boards, but it works. You can see how advantageous the, uh, the horn is. So you can have a good grip of the 
you can almost hear this, this fiber is being sliced. Well, that's uh, that's what a fiber is being sliced looks like. So this is the uh, it's a it's a beautiful hand plane for that uh, for that purpose, and that's the uh, the end result is a it's a beautifully finished uh, end grain. I'll just do this end also. I'm, not, I'm actually left-handed, but I set, I set all, most of my planes up for both left or right-hand operation. This was set for right-hand operation to work with my, one of my uh, multiple shooting boards. So that's, uh, that's in a nutshell, that's, how, uh, that's the story behind block planes. And these are the block planes I use. Now some I don't use as often, like this Q-Rabbit, but the ones I use the most often are the uh, the nine and a half standard angle of 45 and the low angle uh, nine and a half, uh, sorry, 16 and a half. And I've actually got a backup uh, 16 and a half here. So that's. Uh, and uh, I don't have any more. I think that, that would be it for the series on block planes, huh? We'll talk about some other uh, hand tools or hand planes I use in my furniture making. And this, uh, because I, I enjoy talking about this because these are planes I use most often and uh, so I have a very good experience with them. And uh, another important thing is to keep the blades sharp. Keep, keep the blades honed.